Um, if you're joining us now, welcome. Um, welcome from to everyone joining us from Indonesia, Medellin, Pennsylvania, El Salvador, Northumberland, Hong Kong, New York, Shanghai. Tell us where you're joining from. We'd love to see that. Um, and uh, like I said, if you're joining now, you're in for a real treat with our next session of the day um, as you're about to meet Kami, the first influencer with Down syndrome. Despite being a more connected uh, society, the digital world is yet to fully embrace diversity. Avatars that allow us to choose an ideal face and body lead to the heavy underrepresentation and the reduced visibility of people with disabilities. The digital saw an opportunity to revolutionize the digital space by creating the world's first virtual influencer with Down syndrome. And here she is. I don't see people who look like me on social online. media. It's I don't feel scary. I'm in love. I am Kami. Hi, I'm Kami. Hello, I'm Kami. Hi, I'm Kami. Hi, I am Kami. We are all Kami. Um, and here to tell us more about creating a truly authentic and diverse 3D character is founder and CEO of The Digitals, Cameron James Wilson. Cameron, welcome to hi. 3D Tech Fest. Hi, hi. <laughs> Take it away. So, um, hi, I'm Cameron James Wilson. I am CEO and founder of The Digitals, which is an all digital modeling agency meaning that we um, represent and create digital avatars for other brands and for ourselves, um, including the wonderful Kami. But I started with Shudu. Um, and just to kind of give you a little introduction to kind of how I got to where I am, um, I want to just introduce you to Shudu, who is the first model that I created and how I kind of got started in this industry. Shudu came from a place of love and appreciation and I really felt when I created her that I didn't see enough of her kind of beauty reflected in 3D, in games, in movies and I really wanted to create something that would, you know, make people think about seeing, you know, more diversity in these spaces. You, this is a very male dominated industry in the 3D industry and gaming industry. And I wanted to kind of challenge that and show that a dark skinned black woman could be beautiful in 3D, just just as beautiful as anyone. Um, and when I created Chudu, I was lucky enough that she went viral and now has um, over 200,000 followers, which is pretty awesome, but led to the creation of the digitals. Um, I'll just let this play in the background with Shudu again, but so that kind of led me on this journey of kind of discovering um, about 3D fashion and kind of how big this movement was. Of course, we had the pandemic um, and now we have kind of the metaverse is on the rise. So these digital avatars are becoming much, much more relevant every day. Um, they're becoming more useful. Brands are looking to engage with them, to invest in them. Um, and I was approached by the Down Syndrome Institute to create Kami, who is the world's first virtual influencer with Down Syndrome. Um, and with Kami, I was really, really kind of shocked to kind of learn just how difficult it was for people with Down Syndrome to actually see themselves reflected in these spaces. You know, the, the metaverse is supposed to be... Um, completely you know diverse and inclusive you can be anyone or anything but actually what we found is you can't create a character with down syndrome you know and and for those people they couldn't see themselves represented in these spaces you know that it feels kind of like you know erasure and and you know that you're not you're not welcome in those spaces 
um, games like The Sims and Fortnite and, you know, lots and lots of popular platforms don't have options to create a, an, an avatar like Cami, you know, with, with, with Down syndrome. And this was something that working alongside the Down Syndrome Institute, we wanted to challenge and kind of bring awareness to. So just a little quote, this is a quote by me. <laughs> I included it um, because I forget what I say half the time. So creating characters like Cami signify a challenge to the many layers of digital interface that cur currently lack inclusivity. We need to address some of the glaring problems in this space and build the online world we want for the future. And that's something that I really, really believe in is, is kind of from the ground up, having diversity and inclusion from the get go. You know, this is something that we've um, you had to campaign for for many, many years within the fashion industry. And we're only just starting to see change now. And some of those changes feel like fads, you know, um, and and we really want it to stick. And I think for the metaverse to be the platform that really is for everyone, we need to make it for everyone. Um, and that's something that I think is just super, super important to kind of challenge these beauty ideals um, and inherent kind of beauty biases that exist and I think will become more and more prevalent um, as we kind of move towards the metaverse. You know, it is exciting, the metaverse um, and Web 3.0. But I think it also comes with its own set of problems and it can only, you know, it might only exasperate some of the, you know, already beauty biases and problems we have with beauty ideals in, in social media. So we need to be very, very careful of that and work from the ground up to create an inclusive and representative space. When creating a character that represents a community, it's so important to include people from that community. I was really worried taking this job on that people would think that I was creating kind of my own idea of what a Down syndrome person looks like or my own idea of what inclusivity or representation in this space is. And the way kind of around that and the way to kind of uh, navigate that is by actually including people from that community, speaking to them, um, having them be a part of the process. Um, and how we did that was we actually worked with over 100 women with Down syndrome to create Cami, And we were asking their opinions and asking them to, to write posts, to pose as Cami, And also we photographed all of them, combined their faces um, using machine learning, and actually used that as the base to create Cami. So it took away a lot of the... Um, artistic <laughs> touch that I usually have, but it kind of generated something that was truer and more authentic. Because when you kind of add your own artistic flair to things, you know, when I'm creating a character from, or, you know, myself, I'm also have to be aware that I'm creating that character with my own kind of beauty ideas and beauty ideals and inherent beauty biases. And I have to be really, really aware of that. So by using machine learning and kind of using this almost scientific process, um, I was able to kind of negate a lot of those things and, and just kind of stick to what came out, what was generated. So here are some of the women that we worked with. Um, they are all Kami contributors, um, as it says, from 16 different countries, over 100 women. Um, and it was really, really an awesome process. Um, it's totally different to how I created Chudu. When I created Chudu, I was at home, alone, just didn't know what I was doing, um, inspired by Barbie, and um, created this almost fashion illustration, you know, this really unreal character that I have since made more realistic. So uh, since I created Chudu, I have actually changed her body proportions to be more realistic and to reflect um, you know, more natural kind of body proportions. And I think that that's really, really important and something that people should consider when creating digital avatars, you know, when creating these visuals of digital fashion and things like that, is to think about diversity and think about kind of what bodies you're putting this on. So another quote from me, <laughs> generating the initial concept of Kami from an algorithm other than the touch of a human hand eliminated any notion of unconscious beauty bias into the character into the character creation process. 
We really wanted Cami's DNA to represent all the faces and aspect of these women with Down syndrome, which the program allowed us to do. So just going back to making sure that you are kind of eliminating your own beauty biases. You know, we've all been raised with media that kind of affects how we see beauty. We're all influenced by social media, um, by the people around us. And especially when it comes to um, things like Down syndrome, where we're not kind of um, speaking and meeting with those people every day, it's really, really important that we really strip back any kind of biases we may have, any kind of, um, you know, ideas that we may have, and kind of just let the science and algorithms do the talking um, and create something that truly reflects the community that you're trying to represent. So, um, like I said, we actually worked with women with Down syndrome to pose as Cami, which is awesome. Um, this is a great way to provide opportunities for four people from that community. So they get to step into Cami's shoes for the day. They get to have fun and have a great, great photo shoot. Um, and when brands work with Cami, they're not just kind of working with a kind of uh, imaginary person with Down syndrome. They're working with a real person with Down syndrome. Um, and that's really, really, really important. Again, inclusivity, diversity and representation have to be truly authentic. Otherwise, they're just a facade. Um, they're performative. Um, and it's really, really important that at every step of the way, you're engaging with people from that community and you're paying them. That's another really big uh, a really big note is make sure you are paying the people from that community, make sure you're involving them, make sure, make sure you're compensating and crediting them. You know, this is a platform for them. And that's the great thing about Cami. She's working on creating a platform, not just for herself, but for lots of people from the community with Down syndrome. Um, and that's one thing that I just love about this project is I've taken everything that I've learned from Shudu, including all of my mistakes and all of my criticisms that I've had with her, and I've put it into Cami to make sure that she is the best representation um, of her community. And she also is providing a platform for people from her community. Um, and it's just a wonderful to kind of see the all of these incredible people that she's working with, uh, one of them being Charlie French, who is an awesome artist um, and Cami worked alongside Charlie and this was a, a, a real person who was who was posing as Cami working alongside Charlie um, and and they did an interview afterwards as well so you can see it was Lauren here who was posing as Cami um, and then she was interviewed and showcased and just kind of raising awareness about all of the people within Cami's community and I I think that's really strong and, and really really powerful I think a lot of brands have um, are kind of scared to get involved with characters that represent certain communities. And I get asked a lot to create characters that kind of represent everybody. And that in itself is problematic. You know, I'm asked to create a character that looks, you know, a little bit black, a little bit Asian, you know, um, kind of tan skin, but not too dark, you know, and, and that is, is, is problematic. Um, and brands are really, really scared to engage with characters that represent communities because they're really afraid of getting it wrong. And it's important that when we do create these characters that we do it with a really true and authentic intent um, and, and that we include those people, like I keep saying, from the community. And I think you can actually have a much, much stronger message when you're creating a character um, that has something to say, you know, that represents somebody. It might not be representing everyone, but at least you have that kind of really strong, um, you know, really strong kind of representation in that group, however small it is. Um, and I think that can be much, much more successful than trying to create a a character that, <laughs> that looks like no one really, you know, or some of these characters. So, so yeah, so it's great to include people like Lauren in this and Charlie um, interviewing them, making sure that they're showcased on the platform, making sure that everything along the way is authentic and really using every opportunity to kind of challenge this space, bring awareness and make sure that you, you're affecting change, you know, and I think that's really, really important when we're 
such early days in this industry, there is so much opportunity to affect change. There is so much opportunity to make a difference. Um, and that is something that I'm so, so passionate about. You know, somebody who feels, you know, like a bit of an outcast, like a bit of a weirdo, you know, um, I feel that it's so important to make everyone feel included. So the media impact of Cami has been absolutely phenomenal, which is really reassuring. You know, when you launch a character like this, you're always worried, you know, there could be a lot of criticism, there could be a lot of backlash when creating, creating a character with Down syndrome, when creating a black character or, you know, any character that represents a certain community, you know, you really, really wonder how that community is going to react and how they're going to take things. Um, so seeing a really, really positive um, media response is is so reassuring and Cami has had a wonderful reception which which again is really 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 wonderful um, and it's so so important again for visibility in this space you know I think it's so easy to forget certain groups of people in the metaverse I see people creating all of these wild characters you know all of these outlandish characters or alien characters um, but not actually creating characters that represent anyone, you know, and I, I think that's a real missed opportunity. I think at bare minimum, we need to be looking to reflect the population that we have now um, and then kind of almost experimenting and kind of going wild and crazy. Um, I think it's really important that everyone feels like they can be a part of the metaverse because their voice is so unique and so kind of needed in these spaces. Um, and then, you know, I think it can be really, really exciting. I think the metaverse can be a really, really, really cool place so long as we kind of navigate it correctly. So I wanted to just touch again on kind of authenticity. And um, when it comes to Shudu, we actually work with a writer called Amma Badu, um, and she writes um, a lot of the kind of interviews and um, Shudu captions and things like that for us and she is credited she's compensated and that is really 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 important you know when I created Shudu I didn't really know what I was doing and I kind of had to backtrack and kind of work from work backwards you know to make sure that Shudu was a positive representation in this space make sure that she was including people from from the community and you know, luckily with her popularity, I'm able to work with incredible writers like Alma Badu, um, who brings the voice that Shudu needs. You know, a lot of people were worried and a lot of people criticized me and said that I was trying to maybe speak as a black woman or, or have something to say as that. Um, and that's not what I wanted to do with Shudu at all. So as soon as I had the opportunity, I made sure that I put things in place that meant Shudu's voice was authentic and came from a person qualified to speak as Shudu. And I think that the same um, the same thing needs to happen with kind of all characters that are in this space. We've seen um, problematic characters recently get cancelled, like FN Mika, who was a black digital rapper created by white creators. Um, and he was actually using kind of explicit words, um, using the N-word in his raps. And it turned out that these people weren't compensating and crediting the rapper behind it properly. Um, and that actually ended up creating a lot of backlash. And um, the character ended up getting dropped from Capitol Records. And when I saw this, I was really worried because I thought, you know, I don't want Shudu to kind of be sort of in the same boat because we work so hard to make sure that her voice is authentic, that we do credit and compensate all of the um, black creators involved in Shudu, um, but it really was um, a great uh, example of what not to do with a character that represents a certain community. You know, FMika was kind of a list of everything not to do, um, which I think is is kind of sometimes better for people to see that because you I think you learn a lot more from that. Um, so again, authenticity is so so important when creating representation you need to have an authentic intent behind creating that character 
Um, you're not just creating that character for buzz or, um, you know, because it's it's different. You know, you're actually creating that character because you care, because you're engaged in that community um, and because, you know, you really want to challenge uh, the beauty ideals and things that are out there at the moment. So the last side is Q&A questions. I probably ran a little bit short. I did say <laughs> I could probably only fill 20 minutes. Um, so any kind of questions that people might have, I would love to kind of answer them um, to fill up some time. Um, I can see that Brooke is, oh, hey, Sal. Hi, um, <laughs> thank you so much, Cameron. That was really, really um, fascinating, you know, and I love sort of, you know, the vulnerability and sharing, you know, your creative process and especially with Shudu, right? Going back and sort of making things right. Um, I'm personally just curious about the reaction from all the women that were part of creating Cami. Like, have they seen her afterwards? And, you know, how do they feel now seeing an avatar that represents them online? I think they feel amazing. I think they love it. You know, I, th I think from the response that we've had and from seeing some of the pictures that come through from the photo shoots, everyone looks like they're having a great time. Yeah. And I think that's so, so important to also just have fun in this space. You know, this isn't... Um, this isn't a boring area to work in. This is exciting, you know, and I think it's great to kind of work with people who who see that this is fun and exciting and, you know, really want to really want to make a change and believe in what you're doing. So, yeah, I think they've all really, really enjoyed it. Um, and from what I know, they, once they've seen the pictures, I think they really, really love it. That's amazing. All right. Well, let's take a couple of questions from the audience. I'll have Brooke sort of pop them up here. All right, so the first question is from Thayer. So I was going to ask about that. The premise is so noble, but how do you handle the criticism from social media, particularly with such delicate topics? Um, it's difficult. I will say it is difficult. With Shudu, um, the, in the intent behind a creation, yeah, was, was noble. Uh, it came from a place of love, um, but some of the criticism was very valid. Um, and I had to take that on board. You know, I, I had to actually listen to that criticism and affect kind of change within how I was handling Shudu and what I was kind of doing with Shudu. Um, and and parts of the criticism was hard. It can get very personal on social media. Um, some of it was, you know, uh, personal and aggressive. But in between that is is real valid criticism and you have to be open to that you have to be prepared to change your strategy if um if there is some valid crit criticism i don't think you should just throw things out of the window i don't think you should just give up you know because it's so easy to kind of think of that mm. it's so easy to kind of like think i just want to log off and and never deal with this ever again um I'm but it's it's imp it's actually important to show that you can change and to take things on board yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. But I think also there there has to be the willingness, right, to listen and just the open mindedness of having this dialogue. Um, thank you. All right, so our next question here is from Brooke. What was the original design ask with Kami? Is there an ongoing relationship with Down Syndrome International as well? So yeah, there's um, definitely a really strong ongoing relationship with Down Syndrome International. Um, we are actually just the kind of character creators for this process. Um, and they actually handle all of the social media and everything around that. Um, so with the original design ask, um, they just came to us and, and they knew that they wanted to create a character with, with Down Syndrome. And I actually proposed to them the method to do so because I I knew that it was important that this was authentic and this this came from an authentic place and also I I'm really hyper aware of the fact that I've worked in fashion for ten years and I have a mm. lot of beauty biases you know I have a lot of um, beauty ideals that sometimes are really positive because they allow you to create beautiful things but can also hold you back and not allow you to see the beauty in certain certain things, certain people, you know, and, and you need to challenge that. You need to be aware of that. Um, so when it came to Cami, I knew that I needed to remove myself as much as possible from her creation and kind of uh, come up with a method that allowed her to kind of almost come to me, if you know what I mean, almost kind of show herself to me and reveal herself to me. And that's why we used a 100 uh, different images of women with with Down syndrome and combine them to create a, a kind of base for Cami. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's it's sort of like, you know, I think it's a little bit like we were hearing in our earlier session, right? It's sort of having something with purpose. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we might have time for one or two more questions. Um, let's see what we have here. There is a question from Andrea. Uh, mm -hmm. Hi, Cameron. Have you created any senior older characters so far? Last year, I was looking for an old uh, person with respective posture and couldn't find one. Mm -hmm. So the oldest character that we currently represent is probably Danny, who is really ambiguous on her age. Sometimes she looks a little bit older, sometimes she looks a little bit younger, but she's probably probably re in reality in her kind of 40s, um, which isn't very old at all. Um, my problem with creating older characters is it's very, very difficult in 3D to, to kind of get those high quality kind of textures and maps and to make it look really natural. I would love to, to make an older character. Um, but it's just, it's one of those things that takes real skill to make an, an older character because 3D kind of favors smoother skin, you know, 3D mm. kind of favors like less detail. Um, and you actually have to be really, really, really talented to add all of that detail in and, and, um, I, I'm not quite there yet. You know, I'm still learning. You know, I'm still, still would love to have the challenge of making an older character. Um, and maybe that's something I need to to work on. No, absolutely. Um, all right. Um, and I guess the last question, Cameron, what's next? What's next? Um, we actually have one of the biggest projects I've ever worked on coming. Um, she's coming in the next couple of weeks. I have a, a a call about her launch on Friday. She's been three, four years in the making. You know, I wow. I met I met with the client before the pandemic, and um, she's going to be representing an amazing group of women um, who who. I, I'm really, really have become attached to this project. I can't really give anything away, but she uses the same method as Cami um, by combining the faces of these women to make sure that she's representing that group well. Um, but it's totally different to Cami and uh, really, really an awesome project, which hopefully will be really exciting for the community that she represents. So, so yeah, major project coming out soon. Well, thank you so much. Um, we really, really appreciate you sort of lending us into your creative process. And, you know, I think I can, you know, echo what everyone is saying in the comments that it's been an, uh, quite the eye opener. Thank you. Thank you. And I always appreciate you having me. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to seeing you again soon. Sounds good. Take care, Cameron. All right. Uh, well, I'm sure you will join me in uh, following Kami on Instagram at It's Kami's World, where true to her virtual influencer nature, you know, um, she'll give us a peek into her daily life, her likes, her quirks, her friends, and her interests. Uh, once again, Cameron, thank you so much.